I hope everybody's having a, a great morning. Uh, good day of work out there. Uh, obviously, we're on the back end of, of training camp here uh, with another day to go. But I uh, um, thought we got some really good work today. Um, special teams are starting to come together. We've gotten into more unit work. And, and uh, uh, you can see a lot of young guys, I think, are going to have an opportunity to play a bunch of football on that. Um, a couple guys that have been nicked up uh, starting to get back healthy. And, and uh, it's good having them back on the grass. And, and uh, so. Um, pleased with a lot of things that we're doing, and, and um, obviously looking forward to uh, to getting rolling here next week too. Questions. We'll start with Rob and then Paige. Coach, just now that you've had two weeks to look at him and be on the grass with him, how how do you feel about your depth overall, on both sides of the ball this year compared to a year ago this time? Yeah, just in pure numbers, athletic uh, movement, skill sets, uh, much deeper, uh, in particular uh, on, on the defensive side of the football. Uh, it's evident in some of the skill spots uh, offensively, too. Uh, those young guys that are, are, are part of what I'm talking about still have to push and, and get themselves ready to go play on, on game day. There, there's some things that we got to clean up. Um, game day management, those guys operating, uh, some of those guys on special teams. Um, but uh, uh, feel like um, we are a much deeper football team than, than we were a year ago. And, and uh, um, you know, that, that's going to play out as, you know, you inevitably have some injuries during the season. But I think in particular on the defensive side of the football, you'll see more rotation and, and uh, a lot of guys playing. <clears throat> At this point, what unit has been impressing you the most? I don't think that there's one unit that's impressed me the most. Uh, um, there's things in every unit, every position group that man, we got to clean up before we get to, to game day. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, our special teams, there, there's some really positive things with some young guys on those units. Um, but we got, uh, you know, essentially two weeks yet before we get to, to kick off. You know, <clears throat> we'll get into some game prep mode late next week probably. Um, and uh, but uh, there's, uh, there's a ton of positives from, from every, every position, uh, some things we got to work on, too. We've heard about a number of young guys, especially freshmen, that have sort of flashed at different times in camp. At this point, what, what indicators are you looking for, execution, body language, anything that tells you they're ready to actually play? Yeah, body language ma manage, uh, matters. Uh, being able to reset from the previous play and go compete and execute on the next one. Uh, this is a game where every play makes a difference uh, for all 11 that are on the field. Uh, you're not going to win every battle, um, but you got to be able to reset to the, to the next play. So the, the ability to handle that, handle the coaching, uh, not make the same mistake, continuing to progress. You know, we're, I don't know how many, 15 practices in right now. Um, you've seen some of that from those guys. Uh, from scrimmage one to scrimmage two, uh, a big tell is just the jump that those guys are, are able to make and, and you know, take some of the things that they saw in a real live situation in the first scrimmage and apply it uh, in, in scrimmage two. And, and uh, we've seen that from a bu bunch of those guys. <clears throat> There'll be some young guys that week one are going to play a bunch of, of, of minutes. There, there's going to be some young guys that will continue to earn that playing time as, as they go through the season too. And, and uh, so it, it's a constant you know, race against yourself to, to become the best that you can. Josh, a couple of things. Uh, do you like where your receivers are as far as beating press coverage? Um, it's something that we've been intentional at, you know, dating all the way back to, to spring ball, being able to uh, work releases against, you know, press coverage. Um, we spent a bunch of time doing that in good on good uh, through our one on ones too. Uh, our guys have grown a bunch in understanding how to attack different techniques that they're going to see on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Feel like you know the tools that those guys have incorporated into the, their game, and some of them are a little bit different than others. You know, just in, in who they are and their body types. Uh, feel like those guys will be able to to manage to find a way to win and get off the line of scrimmage quickly. And have you seen evidence that you might be a better pass rushing team this year? I, I do, just from their functional movement. Um, you know, individually, uh, their ability to bend. Uh, explosiveness out of their stance, the fundamentals. Uh, Coach Garner and Coach Eckler have helped develop all off season, and uh, then some young guys that have come into our program too that we believe, as the season unfolds, will be able to help us in, in some of those situations. So, the depth, uh, the growth of them individually, some young guys coming in, I do believe that will be better uh, being able to apply pressure with the quarterback uh, without using uh, pressures to do that. 
fall camp, I know just you know, kind of the grind leans on you at some point. How, how are you as what a, a player? Grind. It's, there's nothing better than how, training camp, though. Man. How, awesome. how are you as a player in fall camp? Did you ever kind of hit that wall and then, you know. Training camp uh, back then was a little bit different. It was like 12 straight days or two a day. <laughs> sure. <laughs> are you, are, do you do anything specifically? And, and how are you as a coach? Do you hit that wall in, in training camp as a coach? Yeah, I, I think just the way we structure it, um, you know, uh, the player loads that, that we try to manage with them uh, when we time up our off days, you know, when the scrimmage days happen. Uh, you know, we try to keep them fresh physically, but also on the mental side of it and, and make sure that uh, they're intentional. There's a grind uh, and stress to training camp. I think that part of that's necessary just to get yourself prepared for the season, the, the off season, one thing in June and July and strength and conditioning. Um, but you need some of the physicality and the stress um, uh, during the course of, of training camp to prepare yourself for what the season is going to be like, what those fourth quarters are going to be like. Um, our practice habits are a lot better than they were a year ago. In some ways, uh, we've been able to, to play and practice cleaner, and, and uh, um, we got to do that here the next couple of weeks, make sure we got everybody healthy when we, uh, we kick off on Thursday night. Vince, Patrick, <clears throat> Josh, what kind of progress do you feel like you've made on defense in maybe bottling up some of those mobile quarterbacks that converted on third down last year. Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest things um, to replicate during the course of training camp with quarterbacks not being live. Um, you also want them to stay away from the, the fray. You know, as quarterbacks, hands are coming through trying to keep those guys on the red jerseys healthy. Um, in rush integrity, understanding the design of the scheme and what your job is in it. Um, you know, that's the front four guys, some of our twist game. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, our pressures. Uh, there's times where, you know, we're bringing the linebacker or uh, safety off of the edge. Uh, being able to manage uh, those situations uh, is going to be uh, critical. I did a couple of things that were different this year. There were some opportunities where uh, some of the, the younger guys, um, we put them in a live situation with the quarterback. I think those little things will add up to uh, us handling the quarterback in a better way when we when we kick off. Coach Hendon and, and Cedric are probably your two most known commodities. What have you seen from them in camp? Has there been anything that they've done that's even surprised you, even though you've, you've seen what they can do on Saturdays? Yeah, I don't think surprise would be the right word just because of how they've worked all off season and, and their growth and, and what we're doing. Um, so different than we were a year ago at this point, just their understanding of what game day is going to look like, how to function in, inside the system. And obviously they both grew. Um, I do think, you know, through the course of training camp, you know, we've gotten here on the, on the back half. Uh, we've been able to push the ball down the field and, and win more of those one-on-one -on -one situations. The consistency of uh, throw and catch uh, between those two has continued to get better. I um, feel like you know they're both playing at a really high level right now. Coach, back here, along the same lines of what Austin was asking, you talk to the players and they talk about how much better, how much more efficient it is in year two of, of your system. What about from your standpoint being year two? Yeah, just the continuity that we've had inside of our building. Um, you know, really our entire staff, young and old coaches uh, coming back. Obviously, Kelsey stepping into the full-time role at the wide receiver spot. But, you know, for our players from the first day that they got back in January, we've been able to just, you know, it's not about how it's going to feel or look inside of the meeting room, the communication piece. It's just been about going and competing and, and becoming your absolute best, um, you know, for us as a staff, more in sync, clearer lines of communication, understanding the expectations, you know, the, the layout of training camp, how that unfolds, um, you know, being able to, to grow from year one to year two and just some of the situational football, how we practice to, to help our players uh, for it to be more game-like, you know, and, and be prepared when kickoff happens. Uh, so some of those small things that, that we've changed and grown in, uh, pay huge dividends and in, in just the lead up to kickoff and, and the preparation for our players. Coach, not, not discounting practice at all, but but when you try to you, please you're, don't. <laughs> you're talking about playing a lot more guys. Is there a point during a fall camp where you you go, we just got to see how they react in, in front of a crowd, and when do you know you're kind of to that point, or do you get to that point? Um, you play more guys because they've earned it, right? And I do feel like we got more guys that have been earning it, um, you know, just from uh, from our scrimmages and, and then the way that they've practiced. You're going to find out a lot more 
about your young guys, guys that haven't done it, when the lights come on for sure. And is the stage too big? Is it not? You know, are they able to cut it loose and, and, uh, and go, you know, implement and incorporate all the fundamentals, technique and understanding of scheme and, and go make plays? Um, you know, we anticipate, we try to put them in those stressful situations. At the end of the day, game day's uh, its own, own, uh, own thing. And, and uh, so we'll find out a little bit more about those young guys for sure. Our veteran guys that have been playing, uh, you have a pretty good understanding how they're going to react to those situations. Josh, I was wondering if you had an update on Brew McCoy and, and with that situation and with the season kind of getting closer and closer, how much of a heads up do you all need for him to get into the game plan for the first game, knowing that you're uncertain right now? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, getting him prepared, uh, being able to rep him, all those things, you'd like that uh, before you start your regular game plan week, you know what I mean? Essentially seven days before uh, kickoff. That's, you know, best case scenario where you're able to work him and incorporate him and plan uh, for what it's going to look like when we run out of the tunnel. Our administration's, you know, done everything that they uh, possibly can. They've you know, been great throughout the entire process, um, you know, from, from the very beginning and, and they're still working as hard as they can to, uh, to give him the opportunity to, to play. And you all still don't know when you might get an answer? I, I don't have an, an answer on that. There's, you know, some things that are out of my control, Bruce's control and our administration's control in this process. And um, everybody on our side is working as hard as they possibly can to make sure that we come to a resolution as quickly as possible and, and uh, give a kid an opportunity to go play. <clears throat> Josh, with Hendon's mobility, a lot of people talk about him focus on him running with the football when he's scrambling. But what about him as a thrower on the run? Where is he in, in your eyes? Uh, accurate. He, he's doing a much better job uh, than early last year, keeping his eyes down the football field. Uh, you guys have probably seen it out at practice. We've put a huge emphasis on uh, when he breaks the pocket, it being a pass play, uh, not, a, not a run play. And, and our guys understanding out on the perimeter where they need to get open, understanding uh, you know, space and, uh, and how to function once the original play call breaks down and, and you go into the second design of the play. And um, that can and needs to be a, a big part of our game. There's going to be times that he pulls it down too, and he's got to do a great job with his feet, take care of the football, uh, and, uh, and make sure that we're um, you know, we're continuing to get to the next set of downs, but also uh, take care of himself too. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys.